Hello all. In this video, we are to see something about refrigerants and about some important terminologies associated with refrigeration. Let us start with refrigerant. A refrigerant is a medium which can absorb heat from an object to be cooled and discards the same heat to the atmosphere. So if a refrigerant can take heat and it can give it to the atmosphere, if the process can be repeated, we will be able to reduce the temperature of an object as desired. So the refrigerant does the work, that is the working medium. There are some special qualities that the refrigerant possess. We can see some of those things. The first and foremost thing is the refrigerant must have a low boiling point. Remember the last class illustration. We had a hot pan. We had some water poured on it. The water was boiling and it took water, uh, heat from the pan. Meanwhile, if I have the water poured on my hand, what will happen? Will that take that much quantity of heat? No, it won't be able to do that because it cannot boil at this temperature. So if it can boil, it can take more heat. That is the thing. So here, low boiling point is very important thing. For example, for a refrigerant R134A, the boiling point is minus 26.3 degrees centigrade. So what happened? Even if there is a temperature of minus 10 degree, it can take heat from that because at minus 10 degrees, it will evaporate. Its boiling point is minus 26.3 degrees centigrade. That's why the boiling point is very important thing. In addition to that, the refrigerant what we use must be non-corrosive, non-flammable and non-explosive, non-toxic. At instance, if there is any leakage, you will not be uh, able to uh, compensate. So that must be non-toxic and should be orderless. In addition to this, in certain cases, we liquefy the refrigerant. So if it is easy to liquefy, that is better for us. And the refrigerant is cheaper, then definitely it will be good for us. In the day-to-day -day life, we use plenty of refrigerants. So if this is good to the atmosphere, that is also good for us. If it is eco-friendly, that is good. So we are having some properties of refrigerants. Low boiling point, non-corrosive, non-toxic, non-flammable and non-explosive, orderless, easy to liquefy, eco-friendly. Of course, if it is of low cost, it's better for us. So these are some of the characteristics of the refrigerant. Now we see some uh, popular and the refrigerants that are being used now. If you look at, there are plenty of refrigerants. If you see the list, it goes on. But here we have very few of those. It was um, like a R12, R22 were in the field for a, quite a long time. But it was found that they were ozone depleting and creating global warming. That's why CFCs and HCFCs are no more in use. Even if we have some equipment, we could find, but no new... Um, machines or using this uh, refrigerants. If you look at other refrigerants that are used, ammonia. Ammonia is actually having some good refrigerating effect, but it is uh, not that uh, safe to use at uh, household applications. That's why it is uh, in uh, use for commercial applications. Then about um, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, then even air can be used in um, aircrafts. Air is used as a refrigerant, even water can be used in order to um, cool, but it is not suitable for um, all conditions, so it is uh, not much uh, in use. Then, um, as I told you, these um, R12, R22, which were popular, but they are not that eco-friendly, so now we are concerned more about um, environment and now we have some modern refrigerants, some of those things are given here. R134A and R410A. These are some of the refrigerants which are doing the work for us. Okay. Now we see yet some of the terminologies associated with the refrigeration. We start with the refrigerator. 
it's an equipment for producing and maintaining low temperature in a closed space than surrounding. We call it as fridge, F-R-I-D-G-E. In refrigerator, there is no D. Okay, good. Now we move on to look at the other topics. Generally, when we have an object, if heat is extracted, it loses its temperature. For example, if we have water at 10 degrees centigrade, if we extract heat, it could go down as 9, 8, 7, 6, the temperature falls. Once when it is continued, we know that at a particular point it freezes. At that point we need to know something. Look at, here we have 1 kg of water at 0 degree centigrade. Then, once when we extract heat, it doesn't drop in temperature. Rather, it changes its phase. Water to ice, it happens only when we extract some amount of heat from that. At zero degrees centigrade, it remains in water, remains as water. And once when we extract some heat, it gets changed in other phase. That is ice at zero degrees centigrade. The temperature is common in both the cases. Both are at zero degrees centigrade. But here we have extracted some amount of heat for changing its phase. So it's very important. When heat is extracted from an object, its temperature drops, else its phase changes. This is very important. Good. Now we look at refrigerating effect. It's a quantity of heat extracted in a given time. For a particular time given, how much quantity of heat is being extracted. That is refrigerating effect. Now we move on to another important thing. Refrigerating unit. It is uh, denoted as TOR or TR. So what it is? Ton of refrigeration. There are ton of refrigeration and again it is written as ton of refrigeration. What is the difference between these? First thing, here we have 907.185 kilogram. But we call it a ton because in your standards, they have another um, unit for weighing. It is pound. 2000 pounds is actually a bit short than the metric ton what we use. The metric ton what we use is 1000 kilogram. But there the 2000 pounds what they call it as ton is 907.185 kilogram. Now we consider for defining a standard. Considering 1 ton of water at 0 degree centigrade and we extract heat the extracted heat in one day is considered to be the standard look at heat abstracted from one ton of water at 0 degree centigrade to freeze it to ice in 24 hours here we have a container it's an uh, imaginary illustration a container with a 9 out 7 Kilogram, that is one ton. Water at zero degree centigrade. We know that when we extract heat, it will get converted to ice at zero degree centigrade. We calculate the quantity of heat extracted. One ton of refrigeration considering 907 kilogram. 335 is the quantity of heat to get extracted for one kilogram. 335 into 907.185 divided by 24 hours, but we consider in seconds. That's why we multiply with 60 minutes and 60 seconds. 24 into 60 into 60. So here we get 3.515 kilojoule per second. If we convert it in watt, we call it as 3.51 kilowatt. Meanwhile, if you want to calculate it for 1000 uh, kilogram of water that is 1 ton T-O-N-N-E here the value will get changed once when we replace this 907.185 by 1000 we will be able to get 3.877 that is 3.88 kilowatt so what do we understand from this one 1 ton is greater than 1 ton ok good 
Now we need to look at another one important thing before concluding this topic. Here it is coefficient of performance. How do we rate the performance? Here, the heat extracted from an object to the work done. Where is the heat extracted? By evaporating the refrigerant. So the heat extracted in the evaporator by the work input that is given. Often we give it in a compressor. So work input given to the compressor. Heat extracted to work input is considered as coefficient of performance. But the interesting thing to note at this year is COP is always greater than 1 because the work is done by the refrigerant. It is always greater than the work input at the compressor. Go and look at this more. It will be more interesting. Thank you. So in this class we saw about uh, refrigerants and some of the terminologies that are associated with refrigeration. We will look at in the upcoming videos. Have a good time.